Praise God. It's a blessing to be here. You know, especially this time of year, you can't view any messages out there in churchianity or hear anyone talk without them <clears throat> blatantly saying that they love the Lord, but then their actions deny it. That they love Him, but they deny His truth, and they love the lie for whatever reason. I uh, watched a few minutes of a very prominent individual in, out there in the main line talking about Christmas. And you know, the sad thing is, is the this one, there's been multiple, and I saw a couple of them. But this one, he was about five or six minutes long telling this person why he was making this new video. And the reasons that he was defending Christmas was for his own merit. He, he clearly said that it's because it was fun. He loved to do it, so he's tired of people that want to be legalistic trying to ruin it for everybody else. And that alone is the wrong reason to do anything. We're to be doing it for the Lord. You know, in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to me but through, to the Father but through me. He is the truth. He's inseparable. The spirit of truth is the spirit of Christ. He is the way. He's the only way. You can't walk in a way other than what he taught and make it. You can't be blessed if you're going to deny the truth of God. If you want to say, oh, well, that's the Old Testament. It's done away with. Or it's the law. It's done away with. Or make some kind of excuse to worship the way you want. In Second Thessalonians and what's sad is there's so many out here that will comprise, some of them seemingly have really good arguments and can make you stop and think if you don't know the truth, you're not open to the Lord and question. And they have a full agenda to try to turn people against those ones that would shed the truth. To, to reveal the truth. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 7. It says, the, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then that the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by his appearance of his coming. That is... The one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason, God will send upon them deluding influence so that they will believe what is false in order that they, will be, that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. They, if they won't receive, if anyone will not receive the love of the truth, they can't be saved. It just said that there. And that if you keep on pushing it away, keep on fighting against it, he'll eventually give you over to that. John chapter 3. And it's just, it's not just some kind of teaching that you're rejecting if you choose not to seek his truth. It's Christ Himself you're rejecting. It is the Father because they are one. John 3, verse 19. This is the judgment that the light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifested as he has been wrought in God. Over in four, chapter 4 of John, verse 23. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him 
must worship him in spirit and truth. You can go throughout scripture, cover to cover, from the old to the new. And the, the prevailing theme is one thing. God's not pleased with you unless you worship him the way he says to be, that he needs to be worshipped. He doesn't want you worship him according to the pagan traditions. He doesn't even want his name accustomed to it. There were some in Jerusalem back in the days of old that were dedicating feasts to God that he didn't command. And he didn't shine a lot of favor on that. But the way we hear it out here is, well, as long as you're trying to honor God, he's, he's fine with it. You're putting his name in. You're trying to lift him up. He doesn't want any part of it. He doesn't want any part of wickedness. He's called us to be separate, abstain from it. And if we'll reject his spirit, if we'll use some kind of excuse just to have fun and do what we want and say, oh, well, we're dedicating it to God, so he accepts it, then when the time comes for the lawless one to be revealed, who's so cunning it says that if it was even possible, the very elect would be deceived. They're going to go right down that chasm. They're going to be right there with him. They're going to side in with him. They are not of our camp. They are not of our father. Now, we know that some of them out here may not know the truth. But as a lot of the leaders that are teaching them, they know. And they're, they're bringing that deception out there to combat Christ himself because that's what they're doing. They're coming against the truth of God. They have made themselves enemies of the cross. And I know this body in particular, we don't like it whenever the Lord is being attacked, the truth of the Lord is being attacked because he is precious to us. And we will stand up. We will be persecuted. We will be called names in order to stand for that truth. Sometimes we say it quietly and sometimes we get right up in their face. It depends on how the Lord wants to do it, but we will not let it ride. John chapter 17. Uh, I'll back up to verse 14. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in truth, in the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus is the word. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. He's saying here that's how we're going to be sanctified. We're going to be set holy because we love his truth. We are in his truth. We are one with him. And anything besides that is just not going to work. You are siding against him. You are siding against his commandments. So many times through, especially the last three books of John, it says loving God is keeping his commandments. That's the, and if you can't, if you don't keep his commandments and you say you love God, you deny him and you're a liar because you can't do one without the other. In Second John, and I have to admit when I watched the two different clips, I was angry because it wasn't just someone believing a lie and not knowing any better. It was right up in the face, disrespectful to Christ. It was making a mockery of him. It's making a mockery of his word. And I have to say, I kind of felt like Jesus when he drove him out of the temple. I was like, dude, it's glad you're way out there and not right there in my presence. Because if you're going to mock the Lord, I don't want you around. If you're going to <clears throat> claim his name and then mock him and spit upon him, and what he says, we shouldn't want him around, whoever it is. Because he's not going to look favorably upon that, especially if they're in a place to where they're teaching other people to follow that. Second John 1, make sure I'm in the right place. Verse 4, 
It says, I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we have received commandment to do from the Father. He was very glad. It brought him joy that a few of the children there were walking in truth. But the sad thing is, that means the rest of them there weren't. I don't know about most people out there, but I know enough to know my brethren here, and there's other congregations, we're not the only ones, that want to bring him joy. We want to bring him pleasure. That's what we live for. We don't want to seek something out here that's going to cause him harm, cause him pain. He paid too high of a price to redeem us from wickedness for us to put our stamp with them. Third John, starting in uh, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. For I was very glad when brethren came and testified to your truth, that is how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy than this to hear of my children walking in truth. Above, you are acting faithfully in whatever you accomplish for the brethren, and especially when they are strangers. And they have testified of you to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God. It's throughout Scripture. The, the apostles, you think of Paul. He was like a spiritual father to them. And there's times you see him angry, upset, correcting them. And there's times you see them in joy. And they are, they are walking out what Christ feels, what the Father up in heaven feels. It brings him joy when we're willing to stand on the truth because we're standing on his son and his sacrifice. And we're not willing to trample that. And I know as every year comes around this time, we all fi find the persecution when we start standing up because it's right up in our face. But I praise him that his word stands true. Lord, we worship you today. Yes, we worship you today. Lord, we love you. We adore.